There's a lot of excitement and buzz around the idea of network automation. And in this video, I'd like to answer three questions. Number one, how does automation change the way that we currently and are going to manage networks? Number two, what exactly is this thing called an API and why the heck do I care? <laughs> and then third, to kind of reinforce the concept of an API, I'd like to chat with you about what is a RESTful API and give you an example of RESTConf. So for the discussion of how network automation is going to change the way we manage and work with our networks, let's imagine Bob, the admin right here, and he's got four devices, a couple routers, a couple switches, life's good. And for him to manage those, it's manageable. And what he'd do is get his PC or his computer and he'd open up his favorite terminal emulator, whether it's PuTTY or Secure CRT, and open up a session. He would issue his favorite show commands. He would make his changes. He would save those changes. Life goes on. So he'd manage them one at a time. And this is a lot like having a fairly small family. And here's what I mean by that. If we had a fairly small family and it's, it's nighttime and our time for bed and the parent says, hey, uh, Johnny, is your, are your teeth brushed? Is your room clean? And making queries, finding information. And if the answer is no, he would give the instructions. The parent would perhaps have, okay, please brush your teeth or please clean your room or whatever it is. And then follow up afterwards. Did that change actually happen? So if we had just a few people, that'd be okay. Now, if we had hundreds or thousands of people just calling them each out one by one, asking questions by another human, it, we wouldn't have enough time. It couldn't be done fast enough. And so that's where network automation comes in. Check this out. So let's imagine that we have Bob again, but now we have hundreds of devices and I'll just put hundreds here. Right, so we have hundreds of devices to manage. Instead of Bob trying to manage those all independently, what we could do is have some type of a bot, a robot, like a controller, some piece of software that's able to communicate with all those devices, check on things in just a split second, and then make changes if we need to. So Bob could talk to the controller, like in Cisco we have the DNA center as an example of a controller. I'll put DNAC there. And then the controller could go ahead and communicate with all the hundreds or thousands of devices and make very, very quick queries and decisions as far as managing all those devices. So Bob could say, I want this to happen. And then the controller would go out to all the devices and make it happen. Now, because the controller is a lot faster, we might want to give it a special method for communicating with the network devices. So instead of using SSH and logging in and show this and show that and config T and change this, change that, we might want to use some special language between that controller and the network devices. And traditionally, the method or that, that interface between like a controller, like a computer, and the devices it's managing is referred to as an interface, the way that controller talks to those devices. And it's specifically called, ready? An API, an application program interface, because it's the interface that that program, the controller, is using to communicate with those devices. And the question may come up, well, what, what API are we going to use? And the answer is an API, uh, a language of love that's agreed to and supported by both the controller and the devices that are being managed. They both have to understand and work correctly with that API, whatever that is. Now, in the world of APIs, there's a, a family, a general family called REST APIs. Now, REST is an acronym for Representational State Transfer which basically means that like our analogy of the family where the parent is saying, hey, Bobby or Jimmy, or I forgot what the name was, Bobby or Jimmy, um, is your room clean? And if the answer is no, please clean your room. Well, the API, if it's a RESTful API, could make queries to that device. Hey, router one, is this interface up? If the answer is no, it could say, great, let's go ahead and change that. Or I need to change the configuration because both the controller and the device being managed both understand that interface, that application program interface that they're using. So a RESTful or a REST API is a very popular one. Now, it even goes a step further. There's a specific REST-based API called REST Conf, R-E-S-T-C-O-N-F. It's very handy. It's a RESTful API that's used between a controller and networking devices for determining information from that networking device and also pushing information to that networking device if we need to make changes. So that would look something like this. We'd have, this would be a REST Conf. That would be the API in use between this controller and this networking device. Now there's yet another problem. Besides agreeing on what API we're going to use between the controller and the networking device, they also have to agree on what's available. Like, uh, do I want to be able to see all the interfaces or change all the interfaces or change other settings? And that's all based on a menu. Now, if you and I were going to go into a restaurant and we wanted to know what could we order, we would look at the menu. And we also have a type of menu when we work with RESTConf. 
And that menu is called a data model. It's also referred to sometimes as a schema. And one of the popular data models, like a menu, that shows us what these two devices can do, the controller and the device being managed, is referred to as YANG, Y-A-N-G. And, and YANG, the acronym YANG, stands for Yet Another Next Generation. So when you hear the term of YANG, think of, oh, that's like a menu that allows the controller and the device being managed over this RESTConf API to know exactly what is able to be seen and changed between the two. And I should also point out that within the Yang data model idea, there's also specific groupings regarding settings based on the device that you're working with. So I've got one more element regarding RESTConf, an example of a REST-based API between a controller and a networking device that I want to share with you. And that is, what is the protocol <laughs> that we're going to use between a controller and the actual device being managed? And we're going to use what, what RESTConf uses is HTTPS, just like us going to a secure website. And the benefit of using HTTPS is that the controller and the device being managed, they can leverage some of the built-in commands in HTTPS to go ahead and query and get information and also to put or to push information from the controller on the networking device. And so there's lots of really great benefits of using HTTPS as a transport protocol. Besides it being secure, HTTP has a whole bunch of commands already built in. So if, we, if uh, the controller needed to create and put something on that device, it could. If it needed to read, like, hey, Bobby, is your room clean? Hey, R1, is gig zero zero up? Or what is the IP address on that interface? It could, it could do updates. And if we wanted to remove data or remove part of a config off of a networking device, we could also do a delete. And a common way of referring to these four basic functions that are available in a RESTConf API is to do CRUD. CRUD, what can the HTTPS do again? CRUD, what was the answer? Create, read, update, and delete. And if we looked at some of those functions from the actual HTTP commands that we're used to do it, it would include puts and patch and post and get and delete. And the cool thing to implement RESTConf, a RESTful API to do management between a controller and the networking devices, <laughs> they did not have to write a whole new transport protocol. They just leveraged HTTPS to get the job done. So let's do a recap. If we have lots of devices in our network, it's very likely we are going to manage those at some point sooner or later with a single or a pair of devices as controllers. Now, the language of love between the application of those controllers and the devices they're managing, it's an API. That's the method they're going to use to talk with those devices. A major class of APIs is called a REST API or a RESTful API. And in configuring networking devices, an example of a REST-based API is called RESTConf. RESTConf uses the Yang data model to identify what can be done and managed between the controller and the managed devices. And for transport protocols, they're going to use HTTPS to get the job done. So our next step to really drive home the concept of a RESTful API like RESTConf is to see it in action. And that's exactly what you and I get to do in the next video. So I'll catch you in that next video. Meanwhile, happy studies, and I'll see you then. Bye for now. Do you ever feel you don't get out what you're putting in? All your hopes are now.